Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this week's Bite Size PD. The topic is FLIP, the program formerly known as Flipgrid. So if you have used Flipgrid in the past, um, this is the same program, just for whatever reason, um, I don't have the specific reason, Flipgrid um, updated its name to Flip. Many of the processes and things I'm going to talk about will be very familiar, so this could be a good review for you. And if you are new to Flip and or Flipgrid, welcome. Um, I'm excited for you to learn more about this. So I am recording this session and it will be made available on our Canyons U site. Um, as always, here is a rundown of our professional development norms. Be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe. Uh, it's just me today, so I don't have to worry about any of the norms. But at any time, if you have questions or want more information about what I'm talking about or would even like some more support in using or even starting to use it, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org. Um, or you can reach out to your school-based coach and they can support or even connect me with you as well. But I'm more than happy to jump in and help you the best I can. Um, as always, with the professional developments that we offer, uh, we like to connect them to our multi-tiered system of support framework. And specifically when it comes to utilizing educational technology tools, I like to ensure that I'm making connections to our instructional priorities, meaning those instructional strategies, because I am a strong believer that when you are utilizing educational technology, no matter what the tool is, um, it should be used in a way to support stu student learning, understanding, achievement, and really be connected to supporting those learning goals. So I, I don't believe in using technology just to use it for fun. I mean, okay, you can use it for fun. However, when you're using it with students for learning purposes, I feel very strongly that um, connecting it to those learning goals is very important. So the learning intention for this um, Bite Size PD is that you're learning about FLIP, what it is and how it can be used in the classroom so that you can decide if and when you want to use it with your students to support blended and or learning opportunities. Uh, the success criteria for this session is that you can, you'll know you're successful when you can describe what FLIP is, identify some ways that it can be used with your students, and then have a basic understanding of how to create and implement FLIP with your students and know with anything that you're starting or implementing new, um, there's gonna be some learning. You're gonna make some mistakes. It's gonna feel a little weird and, and awkward at first. It just takes some practice and the more you use it, the more fluent you'll feel with it. So here's the agenda for this session. I'll just do a quick rundown of what is FLIP and some benefits of FLIP. Um, I'll share some ideas for using FLIP in the classroom, um, getting into how to get started to use it. And then I'm gonna spend more time maybe a bulk of the time showing you how to use it in Canvas, as well as explain why I would recommend using Canvas rather than going directly to FLIP with students. So what is FLIP? Once again, it was formally called Flipgrid. So if you're like, well, I know what Flipgrid is, I'm used to that. It's the same program, just an updated name. Um, if you had Flipgrid integrated into Canvas, you may find that you have to, um, you may have to re- integrate or reinstall that integration into your course. But bottom line is it's just Flipgrid with a new name. Um, and once again, for those of you who are new about Flip, um, it's a video-based tool that allows for discussion across multiple devices, meaning it can be done on a Chromebook, a laptop, a computer, um, a mobile device. Um, it is designed to help with group discussions. And when I when, with group discussions, I will have this caveat, if you're in a classroom um, and you have students all together, I'm not, when I show you about FLIP and I'm saying it's for group discussions, in no way am I saying have your students all then get on the computer and have group discussions using FLIP. Um, there's a time and place for its use. Um, if you find yourself in a remote learning situation, an online situation, or maybe a homework situation, um, that's where maybe FLIP might be more appropriate. Or if you're wanting students from different um, classes to be able to interact. And so they're they're talking to more than just the people in their physical classroom. Um, but if you have students together, have them actually talk to each other, not specifically through the computer. So, but I'm hoping you've seen there, there is a time and place for FLIP and it can be very powerful and fun for the students as well. Um, it's online and can be accessed from web browsers like Chrome, Safari, or there's a FLIP app. And if you access this slideshow, I have links for iOS and Android devices that take you directly to um, 
the app. Uh, benefits of using, it does provide the ability to interact using video. So if you're someone who has been using Canvas discussions as a way for students to communicate, um, this is one way for, for them to have these conversations and actually look, look and see each other. Um, there is the opportunity in Flip when you're using it not to use the video feature and you can have text, um, just audio. So those are things to think about as well. But one of the benefits and the, the reason why people like it is you can have this back and forth conversation using video. Um, it can be a great tool for students who are less socially able students. So maybe they have a little bit more anxiety when it's um, an in-person, um, they don't have much time to think. It's um, just really that helps students who maybe have a little bit more anxiety about having some face-to-face -face interactions um, and maybe having it online when they're talking to a computer so it doesn't feel quite so scary. Um, just something to think about. Um, another benefit is that it does integrate with Canvas. And like I said, I will be spending time showing you that integration and how it works. And then as mentioned, it's online and can be accessed from multiple devices. I have the asterisks there um, just because something that we've learned or experienced, if you have students using like a mobile device, like a phone, uh, we've run into situations where them recording their video it's been difficult for them then to connect it to the flip. So I usually recommend that with students when you're having them do this, um, actually recommending a device like a Chromebook, um, a laptop, a, a, a computer. Um, I had some university students do this and I think they were all, the, the ones who had this issue were on the mobile device, their video kept coming in upside down. And so they found when they went on an actual like computer device, they were a little bit more successful. Now there are workarounds. It could be them recording the video and then uploading it to Flip. But just, I share that caveat just in case, especially if you're in high school and you have students wanting to do everything on their phone, that could be an obstacle that they run into. So ideas for using in the classroom, uh, before I run down this list, I wanted to share a way that I've used it in my professional development with teachers. Um, I was teaching an online class and we were doing a jigsaw where I actually had them working. I had them assign specific pieces of an article that we were reading. And then their initial response was teaching um, others in the group about the part of the article that they had read. And then their task was to watch what everyone else wrote. And then I had some questions and some responses I wanted them to kind of respond to and kind of go back and forth. So that's one way that I've used it as a jigsaw opportunity. Um, other examples, um, reading responses, maybe not a jigsaw, but maybe you have them read something and then respond and actually go back and forth. Uh, you could have them debate a topic. Um, it could be a way to assess speaking skills. Uh, it could be a way to revitalize your exit ticket. So maybe your flip starts with you posing a question and the students are responding to it as their exit ticket. Uh, number talks, uh, getting students to really talk through the processes they have, for maybe specific math concepts, problems, whatever it might be. Uh, 3X math is an idea as well. Project share, what this is, is maybe that you have the students actually create a project and then they, they start with the flip um, and they're sharing what their project is, uh, providing details, providing examples, providing a, a visual of it. Um, it could be used to do some community building in your class, maybe getting to know yous. Um, you could have you could have a class at the end of the year provide advice for next year's class that maybe you send out prior to the school year starting and so they can kind of get some thoughts or maybe it's a homework assignment after the first day. Um, and if you do student of the week, maybe it's a way to think about how you can utilize, utilize that for student of the week. Um, these ideas came from two different sources that I have linked at the bottom of this um, slide as well. If you want to click on those resources and maybe read a little bit more about some of these ideas. Um, but there's lots of other ideas that are out there. And number one, like I said, when it comes to using uh, flip in the classroom, I would really recommend that you think about what are your learning intention success criteria and is flip the right tool to support you in um, or having the students achieve that goal and really help their understanding and demonstration of what they've learned. So when it comes to getting started with flip, um, you do have to have an account. And so if you go to flip.com, the first page you come to looks something like this. Um, if you already have an account, you can click log in or you do have to sign up. Um, depend, no matter which one you choose, if you have an account already, 
rather than saying sign up, it'll say sign in. I always recommend since we have our CSD docs account, just sign in using your CSD docs. Same for students. If you have them go directly to flip, I'll talk about that in a second um, and sign up. I just recommend, I would recommend signing up with your CSD docs account. It just makes the sign in that much easier. But then once you have an account and you get into flip um, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I want to spend more time showing you how to use the canvas integration. But when you get into camp um, flip, this is what your dashboard will look like. I have a lot of different groups that I've already created. I've been using this for a little while, um, but you initially will create a group. And then within that group, you will create topics. And then when you're ready to have students participate with it, if you're going directly through flip, um, what you would do is actually share the link. And there's this little share button here and you um, get an invite link that you can post or send to your students. And I always recommend that you say anyone with this link can um, participate. Otherwise, you have to approve everybody who's going to participate in your flip. Um, but then what students would do is when they have that link, it will prompt them to log in and you can tell them to use their CSD docs account and then they can go through um, and answer the prompts and go back and forth. And then you as the teacher can always come back to your flip account, click on the topic you created, and you can actually go through and watch everyone's responses. So the reason why I wanted to spend more time with the campus integration, I think using Canvas is a better way. This is my opinion. I mean, I know we're all, we're all welcome to our opinions, right? But I think with Canvas, it eliminates the need for students to have to log in. Number one, they're already logging into Canvas. You can create the Canvas page, like the assignment. You can have whatever directions you want um, written there. And then the flip is right there for students to participate. And then if the flip is something that you're deciding to grade, um, it's easier for you as the teacher to really hone in directly on those specific students and see their flips and actually award a grade. So I like Canvas just because I think it makes the user experience um, a little bit more seamless for students. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go out of my presentation right now and I am going to go into first flip so there's a few things you have to do if you're wanting to use the Canvas integration. Number one, you have to set up the integration. So to do that, if you log into your Flip account, and this is where I had, like you were just seeing a picture of, um, this is where I can add my group, my topic. Um, I'm gonna move this over a little bit. In the upper right-hand side, um, there's a little circle, mine has a smiley face on it. If you click on that, you wanna go to settings. And so in settings, there's an option to select integrations. And with the integrations, you scroll down to Canvas. Now you'll see I already have an integration, but if I didn't, I would click on add new integration and then um, give it a name. And so you don't have to do this for, if you have multiple Canvas courses you wanna do this in, we'll try this out. I don't believe we have to do it for every single course, but um, you want to give it a name, hit create, because what that will do, it was list the name here. And the two things that you need to add to Canvas, which I'll show you in just a second, is a consumer key and a shared secret. What these two things will do is essentially, it's what tells your Canvas course to talk to your Flip account. So once again, when you're in your Flip account, you go to the settings by clicking on that smiley face guy in the corner, go to integrations, and then you want to add a new integration. So I'm going to keep this window open because my next step, once I've created this consumer key and shared secret, I want to go to my Canvas course and I need to add this integration. And notice I'm keeping both tabs open because I need to copy and paste this information in a minute. So when I'm in my Canvas course, you want to go to the settings section of your Canvas course. When I'm in set settings, click on apps. And it gets confusing. Don't click on integrations, click on apps. Um, you're gonna search for Flip. When it comes up, just click on the icon and you're gonna click on add app. So I go to settings, Go to apps, search for flip, and then I'm going to add. And then you'll see there's a space for the consumer key and the shared secret. 
And that's where I wanna go back to my flip account and why I kept both tabs open. I'm gonna copy my consumer, consumer key first and paste it. I'm gonna go back to my shared secret and just hit copy and then paste my shared secret and I'm gonna add my app. So now, and if you even want to double check to make sure it worked, if I were, if I um, put, type in flip again, you'll see in the upper corner, it tells me I have it installed. And you only want to install it once. You don't need it multiple times in one course. So once I have flip installed, the next step is I want to add it as an assignment. So I like to add my assignments through my modules. That's my workflow. But you can easily go directly to assignments and create your assignment there. But bottom line is you're going to create an assignment. Let's see if I can. I'm gonna create an assignment. I'll call this my flip example. I'm gonna add my item. And I'm gonna go in to flip. I'm gonna edit the details. So you'll see creating the assignment, this process is still the same. I can add my directions and your directions can just be text. Maybe it's a screencast of you talking through what you want them to do. Essentially, these directions will appear above the flip that they're going to complete. So then you can give it points, you can assign it whatever uh, group you want. Uh, but then the submission type is going to be external tool. Um, and the external tool, the the way I remember that is I'm connecting something outside of Canvas into my Canvas course, so it's external. Um, I do external tool, I click on find, and you're gonna scroll down and find flip. If you don't see flip as one of your options, it's because you didn't install it. Notice how Flipgrid used to be there. We want flip. And I'm going to select, and it's looking like nothing's happening right now, but it is. I'm gonna hit save. So then, as I don't have a topic yet, so now, and I didn't create a group, it's saying after connecting Flip to Canvas, this is automatically going to create a new topic for this Canvas assignment. Students can submit videos and they will automatically show in SpeedGrader. So I'm gonna create a course group. So it's, it created the group for me, and I believe it's, it's naming the group the course that I am in. So now, I can add to topic. So because I'm the teacher, I wanna start it off, or maybe I don't want to start it off. You can say, um, maybe the, the prompt is up here. Um, so you, the teacher, don't necessarily have to be the very first video, but you can choose to. But maybe, the, maybe my directions say, hey, in this flip, I want you to talk about your favorite animal. We'll just go that with an example. So what your students would do when they go to this page, and actually, I mean, let me try it. I'm going to go to modules. Um, I'm going to make sure my assignment is published because it will need to be published in order for me to have students see it. And I'm going to go to my student view. So I'm going to try this out as my test student. So with your students, they would go to modules. I'd go to my assignment. You can see where my directions are. And that uh, pink, pinkish purple buttons telling me to add to topic. So when I click on that, this is where, and I really didn't go into certain features of Flip because I think that's where when you get in, and plus this bite size PD is only meant to be short to the point. Um, I'm going to encourage you to go in and try it out, but you'll see where it defaults to me being able to record a video, but there is a way for me to add a backdrop. There is a way for me to change the lens. As you're recording, you can add text, you can draw, you can add stickers. Sometimes students can get a little lost on that. So you might wanna have some direction about what or what they can or can't add, or maybe the very first time you do it, you kind of let them explore and get that out of their system. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record. So I'm gonna press the middle video button. So the prompt for me was to write about my favorite animal. So my favorite animal is the panda because they are the funniest bears to watch when you're um, watching them on video. They're just clumsy and goofy and I just love them. And as I'm writing, I'm going to add some text just so you can see what the text looks like. This is all part of what I'm adding. Uh, maybe I want to move that around. 
Maybe I can see if there is a sticker of a panda bear. I'm not sure if there is. Maybe we'll just do a bear for this example. And this is where you can see where stickers can get a little tricky because maybe I go a little goofy. And me going through this right now is literally just letting you know what the features are available. And I'll show you what this playback looks like. And when I'm done recording, oh, one of my favorite features too, there actually is a board where you could actually draw if you wanted to, even this right here. Oops, let's see if it'll let me. Anyway, so when I'm done recording my video, I can hit next. So the prompt for me was to write about my favorite animal. So and my favorite animal, and what this is letting me do as the person per, um, participating in my flip, I can actually preview it first to make sure I think it looks okay. And you will see there's some splitting. Um, the editing is very, 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 very basic. I can even add some background music. Maybe I just add it just to see what happens. So the prompt for me was to write about my favorite animal. So if I'm satisfied with my response, I just hit next. I can add the caption. If there's a link I wanna provide as well, the participant in this flip can actually provide that. I will say post, let me actually just do this, just so you can see what it looks like. Here is my caption, post to topic. So now, it's posting. I'm going to go to the topic. So now I can see here's the response. And as students continue to respond one to another, so the next person who adds to topic, it'll actually appear the next. So kind of like in a, a, a row. Um, there is, I thought there was a way to respond to specific individuals. But anyway, I'm trying to go fast. But um, this is as the participant where I can actually go in and maybe edit whatever I need to do. But then when I'm done, I can, as a student, I've submitted and I've completed the assignment. So I'm going to leave the student view and just show you quickly what it could look like in SpeedGrader for the teacher. So as the teacher, I'm, I'm now seeing what the different responses are. I could even search responses if I'm looking for an individual. But if I go to SpeedGrader and go to my test student, and maybe it's because I have a test student. I don't know. Because I've done this with um, some students in the past, and actually it just shows up right here for me. So I'm a little bummed it's not showing up right now. It might be because my test student, I'll have to explore why it's not happening. So, but it should be appearing in speed grader. I'm going to do some troubleshooting to find out why it's not. But also what I could do as the teacher, if for some reason my backup could be if speed creator is not working, I could go back to my flip by logging into flip.com. Notice how the group that was created is the title of the Canvas course I was in. Here is the example that I just created. Um, the flip, the topic name is the name of the assignment that I created. And if I click into it, this is where I could see the different submissions and I could actually review it. Um, and, and I know, so I'm going to recognize this is a very quick, to the point, um, not very deep surface level presentation of, of about flip, how you could use it, specifically how you can tie it into a Canvas course. But if you're wanting deeper training on this, you have more specific questions, you want more help, you really want to explore how you could use it. Number one, my first tip is get into flip and just try some things out. like. Try, explore, be willing to make mistakes, um, play with it a little bit. Second, feel free to contact me, camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org, and I'm more than happy to come work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, even be in the room as you're doing it with students for the first time or explaining it to students for the first time. Um, number three, you could also check with your school-based coach and see what support they can provide for you as well. So with that said, um, that is the end of this bite-sized PD. So I appreciate you tuning in. 
Um, as a reminder, if you want some relicensure, relicensure credit for watching this Bite Size PD, uh, there is a link here that you can access to get that relicensure credit. So I hope you try it. I hope you explore, play, and as I already said, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or need help.